celebrating in a flat sledge opens up the road. Hmm? Our horses snort and snuffling through the snow, swish through forests of birch and fir with a jingle of harness and a crack of whip. The wolves are invisible behind their howls. was to hear the Kremlin bells and to know that soon we would be safe from war. Around the samovar. Hmm. How these Berlin winters bring it all back. <laughs> you are a tease. <laughs> and you about an accident. It says just go crash, collapse. The whole street collapsed? Wall Street. Were people killed? Just a few. Mostly jumping out of windows. Nearly all of them were stockholders. Oh, man. You are such a, such a stupid woman, Lydia. 
You've lived here for seven years already and you still can't speak the language properly. Still, I don't mind. Intelligence would take the bloom off your carnality. No, a woman like you should keep moist and plump. Idia. Idia! Who the hell wears red socks? Oh! There are dalliants. He's always taking his socks off. You know what he's like. Your cousin sticks. He should be in a zoo. Here. Blood is thicker than water, Herman. Handsome, isn't it? Oh, Herman, you're so masterful. How dare you come into this room partly clothed? Off with it! Have you no sense of indecency? Don't close the door. Why not? I want it open. But Elsie Elsie's might... Elsie's gone to bed. Leave it open. I live in a house of parrots. Will you please hurry? Coming, darling. Oh, Elsie. And don't forget what I told you about the Christmas tree. Hmm? Good 
please. Yes. Too bitter or not bitter enough? That is the problem. At whom are we aiming? Some girls only like it bitter. Fastidious little pricks. Then there are others, the rich ones, smooth, who like it milky and chocolatey. Like my mother. Yeah, my mother was like that. She was a fat bourgeois with too many rings, popping chocolates into her fat, jowly face. <sighs> On wet afternoons, she would go through an entire box of peppermint creams and the family photograph album. Thank you. I don't know why I tell you all this. Please excuse me. No, the problem is not here in the chocolate. The problem is in New York. Germany has borrowed seven billion dollars, mostly from American investors. And now, the chocolate spree is over. There would be plenty of money around if it wasn't for this government giving it all away to greedy foreigners. But reparations must be paid, Muller. Who says? Well, the Treaty of Versailles. I didn't start the war. Why should I pay for it? Anyway, the war has been over 12 years. My God. As long ago as that? Now the politicians are betraying us. If it wasn't for the reparations, Ge Germany could rebuild and become strong again and regain her place as the greatest country in Europe. <laughs> Müller, Müller, you begin to sound like that man in the newspapers. Alfred... Alfred Hugenberg, sir. Alfred Hugenberg. Some of the newspapers say that, too. Alfred Hugenberg owns those newspapers, yeah? I don't care. A hundred and twenty billion gold drives. It will cripple us all. You should have been at the plebiscite meeting last night. I am a foreigner here. If enough of us vote against the payments, that would be the end of it. What could the French do? I suppose they could occupy the Ruhr, like the last time you didn't keep up the payments. They're still there. French and British troops on German soil. Excuse me. In my opinion, this is just a little too bitter. Slightly. Thank you. How about dinner out? Perfect. Good. How is here, Herman? Just following the bar. I hope that's all right. By all means. <laughs> Why don't you bring your laundry while you're about it? Won't keep you a minute. Your goggle muggle, Hammond. That goggle muggle is my goggle muggle. Only one goggle muggle is your goggle muggle, Audi. The other goggle muggle is Hammond's goggle muggle. Since it is not a chocky walkie, I don't care whose goggle mogul it is. But no, thank you. I drink to the plump dumpling breast and buttocks of your wife. And I drink to the plump dumpling brains of your cousin. I intended a compliment. Speaking as a painter. And so do I, speaking as a connoisseur of soft centers. Chocolate technology lags hopelessly behind the sweet confectionery of Lydia's grey matter. If you opened her cranium, like an Easter egg, you would find inside it a matinee assortment of creams, of fondant, of praline, rum truffles, liquid liqueurs, and my favorite, Turkish delight. My God, you think I patronize her? 
But anyone can tell you that she adores me. She needs a patronizing type, like I need a patronizable woman. We're a perfect couple. I like literature, she likes trash. I'm clear thinking, she's scatterbrained. She's messy. We are a perfect match. Like a lock and a key. Oh, Herman, you talk about life as if it had some deeper significance. You'll be careful, Adan, and be very careful what you say. Because I think over there, there is a man who looks exactly like a Viennese quack. Lydia will be returning, but only momentarily. Do you want to make a bet? <laughs> she usually goes out twice. The first time because she's left her comb on the wash basin, or else she needs some small change. Ah, here she comes now. Look at her, isn't she wonderful? Look at her clothes, are they beautiful? Her color sense is based entirely on linguistics. Brick red goes with cherry red because after all they're both red. She calls it echo. It's the same with her politics, you know? Where they clash, she says they echo. Red is red! What are you two talking about? Russian politics. But what can you expect of Bolsheviks? I couldn't find a lipstick. <laughs> you uh, dropped it. I suffer, but I never complain. Adalian, shall I tell you a mad little secret? Hmm? There are some things which only a husband and wife know about each other. I don't think that would be quite fair to Lady. Why not? It's all in the family. And blood is thicker than water, as Lydia is apt to remark so wittily. Are you ready? No, no. I find it most offensive of you two. Just as I thought. You are nothing but a Ukrainian peasant pretending to be a bohemian. Yeah. Please give me the check. All right. Tell me then. She never quite puts out her cigarette. <laughs> Orlovius. Huh? My friend says you look like a quack. He wants to speak to you. Well, I have more reason than most. Then you mean you are. Oh, my dear sir. Would you mind just talking shop to me for a moment? Uh, not at all, but... Please uh, do sit down. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> what do you know? What do you know about this subject? Dissociation. Huh? The, uh, the split person. The man who stands outside himself. Huh? I'm thinking of writing a book about such a person. Maybe two books. What... What, what does it mean? What is known about it? What do you think it means? Does it only happen when you are drunk? Me? What do you make of that, doctor? Sex or violence? Oh, please. Or tell him he's in love with his mother. And why shouldn't I be? She was beautiful and refined. A pure Russian of old princely stock. I remember in the summer she used to wear lilac silk and sit in a rocking chair, fanning herself. I seem to hear Chopin rather badly played. It is myself, at the piano under the careful eye of Frau Schiller, my governess. <laughs> Still talking politics? Uh, this is Dr. Olovius. My name is Herman. This is my wife. Ah. Mr. Olovius. You're not a doctor? I'm in the insurance business. But, but surely you implied that you... That I don't mind talking shop. Tell me, do you have a life policy? No. Uh, perhaps I might explain some of the advantages. 
It's disgusting, Herman. I can't see any line. A line has length, but no breadth. You can. If you could see it, it wouldn't be a line. It would have breadth. The fact you can't see it proves it's a line. Too much sugar in the schnapps, Herman. Change the recipe, that's my advice. centers are not moving well. Two consignments have been returned already. Not enough sugar in the schnapps. Hello, you. I've seen you before somewhere. Your face in the cinema. I never go to the cinema. Don't lie to me. I know.
coming to bed. You could at least bring me my book. Thank you, Elsa. Lydia! Lydia! I'm thinking of going to Dusseldorf for a couple of days. Where's that? In the Ruhr. Is that in Germany? For the moment, yes. Something important happening? A chocolate factory is on the verge of going bankrupt. And I am going to do a murder. A murder? Merchant. I shall gobble them up. Oh, Herman, you're wonderful. But I'll be terribly lonely without you. Why don't you get Ardalian to amuse you? Isn't that what cousins are for? I made a small donation. Those are the only people not prepared to sell us down the river. This is an unusual line. Ginger creams, it appeals to sophisticated tastes. How many hours a day are these machines idle? I'll tell you frankly. Until last year, the problem was staff. There were plenty of better paid jobs around. Now I can have all the people I want, but sales are right down. What's the answer? It's murder. Merger. Ah, yeah. Wrong people have got the money, you know what I mean? If that man was in charge, things would be different. Hugenberg? No, well, they're all working together, but Hugenberg is too soft, too sophisticated. Ginger cream, hmm? An Easter novelty, very popular. Chocolate men like puppets, not the usual clumsy things. Two Easters would put a chocolate business back on its feet. There's a lot of potential here, Herman. Let me sleep on it. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is the same day in my experience. I'll call the hotel. Look, is Herman your first name or your surname? What you like. Herman, 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 Herman. My father was a German-speaking Russian from Ravel. My mother was a Rothschild. their wedding day, he gave her rubies. Her dowry was her own weight in gold coins. The investigation proved them to be chocolate. My father died of grief, my mother of diabetes. I inherited the balance of the chalky walks, and I have never looked back. My wife is a Finkelberg. 
and her dowry was her weight. Most of my information comes from forged documents, as is my fate. When the war started, I procured some papers which stated that I was a black shirt fighting the Reds in the White Army. But after the revolution, I got out as a Caucasian fighting the brown shirts <laughs> in the Red Army. All I really am is just a yellow belly in a brown head. But I'm holding on for myself. Mr. Herman? I have decided. Keep your fucking shackles. My face. If you say so, mister. But the rich man never quite resembles a poor man. If you had a haircut and a shave, we would be indistinguishable. The price of a haircut and shave would come in very handy. <laughs> mister. Find some work for me. Me? I know we are we are strangers. We, do. we have, as, as you might say, a, a bond. You can see it? Yes. We are as alike as, as two peas. It's a freak of nature. Will you turn sideways, please? Excuse me, it this way. Huh? I stand before me. I'm all right for the summer. I like traveling, picking up this and that. But come the autumn, the chromosomatic scale is dotted to infinity, but nature has pulled the doubles. It's, it's amazing. About this job. Where would I find it? 
Uh, this autumn, I'm sure to be at the same village where I worked last year, near Hamburg. Yeah. You could write to me at the post office. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I'll write it down for you. Thank you. Felix Weber Hamburg. I hope your trip was successful, sir. These are difficult times, Frau Schmidt. Yes, sir. Did you hear that Mr. Müller had resigned? No. How could he resign without telling me? Telling you, sir? It's me. Am I mad? Do I own this factory? Or am I some tramp wandering around looking for a job? Oh, not our Mr. Müller. I mean the Chancellor. The government has resigned. Oh, the government. Hello. Hello? You are still giving an excellent performance. Bravo. Hmm. Have you forgotten your place? No. government resigned. Miller wanted to cut unemployment benefits and got voted out. Good riddance. Surely the unemployed should be able to share what's available. When unemployment increases, then the share decreases. When it doubles, they should get half. That's a bit rough, sir. Oh, we have to take the rough with the smooth. <laughs> if the government could uh, reduce unemployment to about a dozen, they would be billionaires. Have you joined the Boy Scouts or something? Do you mind me wearing uniform in the office, sir? No, not at all. <laughs> Most appropriate, a chocolate-colored jacket. <sighs> you know, this chocolate, this chocolate tastes... Um... Bitter? <laughs> It's Saturday. We're waiting for you. We're going to the lake. Don't you remember? You said you wanted to draw me. Oh. Will you wait a minute? done by the housekeeper's son. He is interested in politics. You can have it. 35 marks. No, thank you. Get dressed, Adalian. Lady! Italian, come. Let's start. Start what? Oh, oh. start the art, huh? Are you in a hurry? Yes, I'm in a hurry. By the way, you've got a tricky face, Herman. Would you consider my face unusual?
a modern school. It looks a bit like Herman. Looks more like Herman than Herman himself. God in heaven. And all's right with the world. Oh, please. Have one of these. So kind. All in order? And frankly, it's a bargain. The premiums were set a year ago and are well below under the actuarial reality. Hmm. What kind of reality is that? To me, the only kind. And to you, it's not reality at all. Statistical probability. Oh, you mean the probability of my sudden death has increased in the last year? No, <laughs> statistically. Oh, political riots, violence in the streets, violence in the families, violence, violence in the houses, violence even in the Reichstag, and so on. But I'm so a foreigner in this land. It would be presumptuous of me to have a political opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and bad manners to express it. <laughs> Insurance is above politics. Brown shirts of the communists, the emigre, and Chancellor Bruning himself. They are all equal under the slide rule. Each man's risk gravitates to the mean. One premium for all, according to age and health. Is the Chancellor a customer of yours? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, he wouldn't be considered such a good risk at the moment, trying to force the budget through the Reichstag by presidential decree. I was not considered good for the health. I think you're so clever. Oh, please, have some more wine. Thanks. You don't have to worry about Bruning. He is firmly in the saddle. You don't think there will be an election this year? No chance. He's got Hindenburg behind him and the army behind Hindenburg. Why don't you ever talk like that to me? Bruning can count on the Social Democrats, on the Nationalists, and on the National Socialists to vote against the brown shirts and the Bolshevists. But the National Socialists are the brown shirts. <laughs> oh, you, you're a stupid idiot. So what, clever dick? You can forget about them. What did they get at the last election? Three percent, twelve seats. There you are. I know what I'm talking about. But if there is an election, it will let the extremists in. There will be no election. I fear the National Socialists. <laughs> oh, what can you expect of Bolsheviks? Nazis, not communists. As far as I'm concerned, a socialist is a socialist. Listen, the National Socialists are against the socialists and also against the nationalists. <laughs> That's stupid. It doesn't make sense. And the People's Party is against the people. <laughs> Stop it. What do you think, Herman? I don't think, Lydia. I've just ensured my life. So, here's to my long and happy It looks like Herman in a Dalian cesspit mind.
now. <laughs> this time. Your turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's mine. Oh, yes. <laughs> Go on. Snap. Ah. Snap. Forfeit. That's the queen. Where is the masterful one going? I forget. It sounded like a hat. And play. Panama. What? There is only one city in the world like a hat. <laughs> Don't be silly. Where are you going, dear? Oh, there's another one. Homburg. That's it. Not so far. Overnight, though. Oh, my tummy is feeling funny. I think I'll spend the whole time in bed. Your tummy's feeling funny, Lydia? Yes. Mm -hmm. Perhaps too much goggle, Mongolia? Yeah? I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I'd remember you, but, but as soon as I saw you, I remembered everything. Except the moustache. There, there, aren't, there aren't any sparrows here this year. They, they had to be destroyed. They all, they all got parrot fever or something like, like that. <laughs> I like sparrows. I... I like sparrows. I understand them. Street beggars. I like squirrels too and moles. I, I like a wood to be full of squirrels and moles because they are against landlords. You are a philosopher. Philosophy is an invention of the rich. So is religion, poetry. I don't believe in love either. Now, Friendship. It's a different thing. I'd like to have a friend. I'd work for him. He's a gardener. And afterwards, his garden would become mine. And I'd live in joy and joy and dignity in a natural state. So what do you want? I told you, I am a film star. You are a storyteller. Felix, please. Felix, Felix, now. Now listen. Do you know what a double is? No. But you have been to the cinema. Well. I want to spend money, I find something better than the pictures. Because most people don't feel as you do, otherwise my profession would be in ruins. What profession is that? I have told you, I am a film actor. I am. Now, a double Felix is a person who, in an emergency, can stand in for a given act. Now imagine this situation. Imagine this. I, a film actor, am about to make a film in which I have to play twins. I saw a film with uh... Would you please let me finish? Thank you. Sometimes
sometimes that means that I must be at both ends of the screen at the same time. A bare-faced swindler. I once saw a film with twins. You only saw them one at a time, except when there was a line down the middle. Are you listening to me? Imagine another situation. The film is finished. Hmm? There's only one last shot to do. Uh, the hero has to drive his car past. But he cannot do it because, uh, well, because he's ill, he has a cold, he has flu. So he's in bed. And, he... and the double has to do it. But the audience is none the wiser. And the double has 100 marks in his pocket. Are you following me? It's unkind of you to pull a poor man's leg. I am offering you a money beyond your wildest dreams of avarice and a job beyond your fondest dreams of idleness. We need each other. It seems you need me. But you won't come clean. More shame on you. Now, now listen, listen. Filming is about to begin, and if anything happens to me, they will call you and you will arrive. But he calls me and I arrive nowhere. What is the matter with you? I need your letter. Well, I thought you would offer me some respectable work, yeah. or at least cut me in on a straightforward job. Yeah. I've walked a long way to meet you. Yeah. What do I find? Filth! Filth! Actors, actresses. Pimps, harlots. I don't want your decadence, tinsel and flash. Please listen Give it to themselves, ears. Think they are a cut above these ordinary folk. You want me to paint my face a mint oh. about them? Uh, mm, not for me. Those my friends recognized me. Sit down. Oh, sit, sit down. I'm sorry, no. If you'll take my advice, you'll get out of that business before it destroys you morally. Wait! Excuse me, Amman. You're okay. Well, sharp fellow. You know I have weightier things on my mind, eh? How can I regain your confidence? Huh? I am not a film actor. I'm striving. Scars? No identification marks? Why? Were you in the war? I was. Were you wounded? I was a kitchen corporal. Well, you were lucky. I was locked away in Russia. I had a German family. Ah, you were lucky. I only had a Polish mother. A Polish mother? Kitchen corporal. Have you no scars from hot fat? What? Hot fat. Oh, take it all off. Thank you.
I'm, I'm not, I'm not an actor. I, I really am not an actor. My business is not acting. My business will not define you. I have nothing to do with the cinema business. Robbery. What if it is? I, I want to perform a certain operation. And while I'm performing that operation, I want to be seen far away from the place at exactly the same time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is it robbery? Listen to me, listen to me, listen please. Please listen. You will drive my car, you will wear my, my clothes, and you will drive through a certain village, down a certain street, where my face, ah, excuse me, our face, our face is recognized. Hmm? That's all. And you will have 1,000 marks. Small notes. <laughs> if you wish. <laughs> and you will find them in your pocket. You will get caught with the goods. It will all come out at the trial. You'll squeal. Thousand marks. <laughs> when did you ever dream of having one hundred? I don't care for prison. Food's good. But the people. And what if it's all a lie? Some sort of double cross, huh?
Lydia is here. The woman is very ill. Oh, How nice of you to think of coming. There's something wrong with my tummy. It's better now, but I felt awful in the cinema. You know what she is like. She always gets sick when you least expect it. There's nothing really wrong with her. Woman's imagination. Oh, aren't you going to stand up for me? Come on, dear, tell me. Oh, be silent, both of you. I'm trying to think something out, and you're putting me off. Now, do you remember a painting you made of two roses with a briar pipe? There was a swastika on the back. Please. I remember the swastika, but uh, two roses and a briar pipe. Remember. Have a look around if you like. Thirty one. Yes. Oh, hello. Good day. How are you? How's life more popular? Life is a losing proposition. <laughs> Policyholders are dying like flies. <laughs> you don't look too well yourself. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm, uh, I have a little insomnia, a little bit nervous. To tell you the truth, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit depressed today. What's the matter? Oh, well, uh, I've received one of those idiotic blackmail letters. It's so stupid. Blackmail? Oh, yes, yeah, some cranks demanding money with menaces. Uh, have a look at it yourself. It's illiterate, but uh, I think it makes its point. Do you know who sent it? Uh, he's a rogue. He was in the service of my family. Will you take it to the police? No, I... He's not quite right in the head. What's the good of putting a man like that in prison? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very charitable attitude. Oh, nonsense. No. Well, I go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Please, uh, greet your wife for me. Yes, I will. But you know, sometimes I do envy you your bachelor's. Why so? I have neither priest, no doctor. I need them not at all. So why shouldn't I confide in my insurance consultant? My married life is not very happy. My wife is interested in someone else. And if anything happened to me, I fear she wouldn't grieve for very long. Certain things I have long observed. I wish you better things.
I thought you were never coming. If I had any money, I would have paid and left. Black coffee. Vodka. Two black coffees. A beer, please. Lydia and I are worried about your drinking. We think it affects your... your work. Never felt fitter in my life. Your work. Ah. You've lost your taste for it. And Berlin encourages your natural vulgarity. May I? If you come here to lecture me... No. Lydia thinks you should go to the South. The South? <laughs> Do you hear that? The South. <laughs> the South. The South. The South. The South. The South. Oh, Hermann, yes. If only I could get money, 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 I'd be a different man. There is a place in the mountains where I found my inspiration. Lend me a thousand marks and if I don't earn it back in six months, I'm a Dutchman. The main thing for me is that... The main thing for you is to get you out of Berlin. Does he really mean that? Lydia will adore the mountains. Uh, Lydia and I can't come with you. Let her come. Just for a month. You see, she's sort of jealous of my freedom. She thinks I'm getting tight somewhere. What about your new leaf? Look. That's for the visa. If you promise to stop drinking, I'll give you the money for the ticket. That's a promise. I know that I can trust you. Excuse me. What is it? It's a man. Also. A man. <laughs> what man? What does he want? He says you know him. me on the stairs. What? How could I? I don't mean me. I, I mean... Never mind. You don't think I don't know about you and Elsie? I've known for months. Oh my God, what a stupid woman. Changed your 
Parapontov. <laughs> How about this one? <laughs> Stainless steel. A Russian painter. <laughs> Last a lifetime. Six marks. Two for ten. <laughs> Two for ten. <laughs> <laughs> it's two for ten. Just my luck. I've made you very anxious recently. Mm -hmm. Because I have not been quiet to myself. Uh, not now, Herman. I'm just getting to the exciting part of the story. I have a story too. More frightening, more terrifying than anything you have ever read. Did ya? Herman, what's wrong? Listen to me carefully. Oh. Listen, you have heard me speak of a brother. No. You have? Yes, I think so. My dead brother, who I was so close to, so close he was almost my second self. Dead. Ah, so I thought. But you remember when I went to Hamburg? No. Uh, yes. In a cafe in Hamburg, I met him by chance. Now listen very carefully. Hmm? We had been separated by the war and believed each other to be dead. My Felix, with whom I'd been inseparable since childhood, and as like as two drops of blood, face to face, alive. I say alive, of course, because I was to find that Felix was morally dead. This sweet-natured boy that I've known all my life, this sensitive boy, this musician, the youngest musician, the youngest violinist in the Bolshoi, where our mother used to dance before emperors, the same boy, the same boy, was a cheat. He was ruined. A liar, a forger. Lydia, he was a murderer. A murderer. A poisoner. A poisoner of the woman who kept him. How many Shh. just me? In short, in short, a lost cause. Mm -hmm. Living in hell, bent on self-destruction. Nothing would deflect him from the path that he had chosen. Suicide. No! No! Don't do it. I'll help you.
Was there nothing you could do to redeem him? That's just the question I asked him. And there was. His soul yearned for redemption. I want to make a gift of my death. Those were his exact words. He suggested a plan. I said, no, impossible. I begged, he pleaded. He wouldn't listen to me. What could I do? To refuse him would be a crime. He is determined to die on his birthday. Today. Even the president couldn't talk him out of it. And so I intend to be his executioner. And to take his place in life. Myself. Isn't it a swindle? A swindle? The insurance money, Hen. The insurance money is not the point. We have reached a higher spiritual level. It's much more important that my poor brother is not swindled out of his last chance to regain his self-respect. Now, will you remember everything that I've told you? When they come to tell you that I have been murdered, please, please don't carry on like a Greek tragedy. You know what a rotten actress you are. <laughs> Olovius has been dropped a hint that you are carrying on with someone else so you can moderate your grief. Don't you listen to that the love you Hermann? He's a gossip. You don't understand. Oh, dear. It's all so complicated. Nothing is ready. A new evening suit is at the cleaners. I have no desire to be cremated in my dinner jacket and drive out of your head any idea of getting ready. You know nothing. I'm leaving the house in a perfectly normal way. When I don't return tonight, you telephone up for Lordius and ask his advice. It's very simple. And what about Adalian? Adalian! What's our darling got to do with it? I'm talking about a human tragedy, and you keep talking about nothing. I'm that. sorry. I'm dizzy. Yeah. Oh, my boy. Don't go. You haven't shaved. No. No, the day before either. to his soul. And now, Lydia, it is time, it is time. I will see you in two or three weeks in Switzerland. All you have to do is remember exactly what I told you and try not to flirt with the coroner. Just going to work. It's just any other morning. It's perfectly normal. Did you have a happy day? Yeah?
Ah. My blackmailer. What? Don't get excited. <laughs> Do you think you're going to get one single penny out of me? Uh, not if you're going to report me to the police. No, 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 no. As I promised, 1,000 marks. The deal is on. I knew it. You never took my letter seriously, did you? No. Not for a moment. Did you meet anyone on the road? Only a cart. And I hid in the ditch like you told me. Good. I know. Now, Felix, the great moment has arrived. You have to change your clothes. You'll stay here all day. You can sleep the night in the car. And tomorrow you can go through the village, driving through all the streets. I will give you all the instructions. But first of all is your appearance. capitalist from top to toe. Ah, I've forgotten the yellow gloves. What else have I forgotten? Let me see from the back. steps. Are you Mrs. Sherman? I'm Inspector Schelling. Is there any news of Herman? Grave news. We found him murdered. Elsie! Water! I'm sorry. Oh my God! We haven't put all the pieces together yet. He met somebody by arrangement. Perhaps there was a quarrel. He was shot at close range. Herman didn't have an enemy in the world. Please, Adi, give me the brandy that you prepared. Adi is my cousin, you know. Excuse me, Mr. Olovius. Do you have a moment for me? I have one more question. Yes, of course.
something about a blackmailing letter, didn't you? Yes, it was a threatening letter. I could see he was worried by it. I quite understand. Murdered by person or persons unknown. I realize money can be no compensation for his loss. Will you stay in Berlin? I don't think so. There are too many memories. Felix Weber. I come from Zwickau, a bachelor. Very fond of sparrows, squirrels, moles. Philosophy is an invention of the rich. How do you do? Come here! husband at home? Don't tell me something dreadful has happened to him. I had a premonition about this aspect. We are not sure. The body of a man has been found. Murdered. The man who was wearing your husband's clothes. He had papers belonging to your husband. And this is your husband's passport, isn't it? is not in fact this man in the photograph. For heaven's sake! Who looks like his back my photograph? I think it must be him. What are you talking about? There is no resemblance. He is a different man. No resemblance? Not much. Tell me, is your husband ill at all? Yeah. He's dead! He's dead! He's dead!
I'm expecting a message. Is there one? I'm so sorry, Mr. Weber. No message has arrived yet. Jean? How about lunch instead of the message? Very good fish today. Glad you learned your Sheila. are my family. You must understand. My husband made it possible for my dreams to come true. I knew he... he was going to die when we married. How tragic. Mm -hmm. Poor stuff. Some more. And two lumps. What do you think, Mr. Weber? Hmm? The murder mystery. Oh, I'm afraid I gave up reading those a long, long time ago. <laughs> oh, yes. Conan Doyle, Dostoevsky, Edgar Wallace, and Childish. All that worrying about clues and alibis, polishing the brasses, pocketing the wine glass, the so-called perfect murder. Oh, oh. oh, dear me, no, 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 no. Poor stuff. Well, uh, what would be the perfect murder, then? The perfect murder, Herr Doctor? Yeah, the perfect murder. The perfect murder. Well, the perfect murder would be the one which had never happened, but which was committed. Certainly, mother. Murder which conceals itself. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course, it's beyond attainment. No, no, no. The perfect murder would be the one in which the victim did it. Yeah. You see? I happen to be something of a philosopher. <sighs> Which author were you discussing? Not an author. This case in the paper. You're part of the world. Hmm? Odd case. The monster insured his life and then took another's. Took another's? <laughs> Surely you mean the victim's life was insured. No, the murderer's. Doesn't make sense. He dressed up someone in his suit and then shot him. How did it know? <clears throat> How did they know? No. Guess that the victim was not the man he was dressed up to be. But presumably there must have been some kind of uh, a resemblance. It doesn't mention one. Well, look for yourself. Huh. Must be off his head. No news, not yet. 
if we knew who the dead man was, I think we would find your husband quickly enough. I told you he was his brother. Your husband had no brother. Or was he in the habit of lying to you? How would I know? Did this stick belong to your husband? I found a clue. A clue? Fantastic. They already know the murderer. They won't find him. Because they don't know who the victim is. Don't you see that? That's a clue to the victim's identity. Rubbish! Rubbish! Slides! All slides! Lies! Now look here. You stop doing this. Do you understand? Please. for the peace and the quiet. For my nerves. All this obsession with murder. find it very quiet here. Good. Just what I wanted. Your passport. instrument do you play? Instrument? Oh, yeah. Cello. Cello. I'm a cellist. I suppose you have all the newspapers here? Of course. Oh, bluff. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> bluff.
Hello? Sir? Have you a free room? Yes. Oh, perfect, perfect. A remote abode of work and pure delight. <laughs> I, I'm a musician. Oh, last year we had actors. A film company was here. Even my little bird was killed. His name was Helio Cabal. Sad, so sad. My key. We all had parts. The whole village. We all were villagers. Here's your key. Thank you. No, no, no. You have to go up there. Around the corner and up the stairs. Your room is the first on the left. My room is the first on the left. Yes, it's him.
Tom. Hermann Hermann? Yes. No. Childish. Good people. We are making a film here. In a minute, I will be coming out. But you must keep the policeman back. So that I can get away. I'm a film actor. I'm coming out. Don't look at the camera. I'm coming out. 